All right, so welcome to um, Percents. Um, this entire unit, we're gonna talk about a lot of different ways to solve percent problems. So you get to learn the different ways. On the test, you're gonna show all the different ways. And then afterwards, you get to choose which method works best for you. So maybe what you learned today isn't your favorite method. That's okay. I still wanna see evidence that you know it by having you show me on the test. And then, like I said, after this, you can choose to solve problems however you want. Okay, so what we're going to learn about today is called the percent proportion, which is nice because it's right after the proportions unit. So there's a couple different ways to think about it. And the goal today is we're going to identify the parts um, of the problem and then set them up in a way uh, that makes sense. And we're going to solve them as a proportion problem. So let's get started. So let's think about a situation where you say, um, like how much of a class, is, well, you say, what is 5% of the whole thing? Okay, 5% of the seventh grade, something like that. Um, when we think about that is and then of, that's actually a fraction. So when you think of what part, what percent is, and it's part of the class out of the whole class. So what percent of the, what percent of the class is, redheaded or is right-handed or something like that, okay? The people that are right-handed represent a part of the class and the whole class represents the whole class, okay? And I know this first part's kind of confusing. It took me a minute to realize how to even start explaining this. So it's always a part divided by the whole and that gives us the percent. So that equals the percent out of 100 percent means per 100. So if we take the part and divide it by the whole, we get the percent, which is out of 100. Okay, so that might make no sense to you right now, and that's okay, because I'm going to explain it, and then hopefully that does make sense. Okay, so the part of the whole is the percent out of 100, which is what we just wrote twice. Okay, so notice, I'm gonna go to yellow here, that is and part are in the same spot in these proportions. So whenever you see the word is, that represents a part of something. Now on the bottom, notice the word of is in the same place as the, as the word whole. And so when you see of, that represents the whole thing. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's look. Okay, we're gonna use the percent to proportion to solve each problem, okay? So 18 is what percent of 40? So notice 18 and the word is are next to each other. So that means 18 is the part. So notice I set it up here where you can label them. There's the part, the whole, and the percent. If you know those three things, um, or if you know three of the four things, and I'll talk about the fourth thing in a minute, then you have your proportion. So 18 and is go together. So that means 18 is the part. And of 40, remember the of goes with whole. So 40 goes right here. And notice we don't know the percent. So I'm gonna put an X there. Okay, so guess what? I know three out of the four pieces. Well, the fourth piece is the hundred. Remember there's this hundred in the equation. So these are the four pieces right here. The part, the whole, the percent, and the hundred. So now I'm gonna write my proportion. I get 18 out of 40 is equal to what out of 100? And that's my proportion. So I can solve using the giant one method or I can solve using cross products. So let's do cross products just in case you're not sure how many times 40 goes into 100. The answer is 2.5, but I don't think that's, everybody can think of that off the top of their head. So let's do this. So 40X equals 18 times 100 is just 1800 and divide both sides by 40. So remember, you can totally use a calculator on here. Just make sure that you show like I am what you're typing into the calculator. So when I type that into the calculator, I get X equals 45. And the question says 18 is what percent of 40? So my answer has to be a percent. And so I just take 45 and write it as a percent. There we go, 18 is 40. 5% of 40, which makes sense because half of 40, 50% is 20. And 18 is a little bit less than 20. Okay, let's try another one. What is, so what is, that's my X, 30%, that's my percent 
of 15. That's my whole. Okay. So I'm going to put 30 where the percent is. I'm going to put 15 where the whole is. And I don't know the part. So I don't know what 30% of 15 is. So I get X over 15 equals 30 over 100. Okay. Let's say you don't know how many times. Um, let me fix that three. It's not very good. How many times 15 goes into 100? It doesn't go in evenly. So we're going to do cross products. Let me switch colors here. So 15 times 300 gives me, or 15 times 30. Sorry about that. Oh, you know what? Well, let's just do it. It's 450. And 100 times x is 100x. So I'm going to divide both sides by 100. And I get x is 4.5. Okay, so then I go back to the question, what is 30% of 15? It was asking for a number. So my answer is just the number 4.5. So a third of 15 is five. 30% is a little bit less than a third. And so my answer is a little bit less than five. That makes sense. Okay, let's try another one. So 28 is, so there's my is. Remember is is the part. So my 28 goes there. 4% is going to go here. And what number, the only thing I don't know is the whole. All of these proportions are going to have the 100 in it because they're dealing with percents. So one of the numbers down here that we're writing down should have an X in it. Okay, cool. So I get 28 over X equals 4 over 100. Okay. 28 is 4% of what number? Ooh, I can use giant one on this one. Check it out. Four times seven gives me 28. So that means a hundred times seven gives me my answer. So X is huge. X is 700. So let me reread the question. 28 is 4% of what number? My answer should be a number. So the answer is 700. Wow. That's crazy. Okay. Last one. Find 28.5%, so there's my percent, 28.5 of, remember of goes with the whole, so 200, and that leaves X to be the part. So what's 28.5% of 200? I gotta figure out the part. So X over 200 equals 28.5 over 100. Okay, ooh, I like this. Notice I can use giant one again. 100 times two gives me 200. So 28.5 times two would give me my answer. So let's see, 28 times two is 56 plus another one, I get X is 57. So let's double check. Find 28.5% of 200. So my answer is a number, the answer is 57. Okay, so I went through and I identified the information and then I filled it in here. Then I used the percent, I used the proportion up here to write my proportion. So I used that model to write my proportion. And then I solved using the giant one or cross products. Okay, so I would like you to try the three that are here. Okay, because they're all gonna be different. So identify those pieces, set them up, solve, and then decide if your answer is a number or a percent, okay? Because you don't want to give a number answer if it's asking for a percent, and you don't want to give a percent answer if it's asking for a number. Okay, so hit pause, try those three problems. See you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. Did you think on your own number one was weird? Because the part was bigger than the whole. Normally the part isn't bigger than the whole, but it says what percent of 75 is 80? That means that the answer had to be over 100% because 100% of a number is that number. So 80 is 106.7, roughly, I rounded, percent of 75. For number two, um, eight and a half percent of 160 was really small. It was just 13.6. And that's kind of nice because 10% of 160 is 16 and 13.6 is a little less than that. And so is 8.5. Okay, 86% of what number is 77.4? The answer was 90. So that makes sense because 86% is almost 100%. And 77.4 uh, is really close to 90. Okay, so please get help if these don't make sense. Um, you're setting up a proportion every time and solving for the unknown. Sorry, none of these were the giant one. They all used cross products. 
Okay, cool. So now let's look at how to use these um, in like a real life situation. Okay. So when we read the problems, we have to try to figure out which number represents the whole thing and which number represents the part. And because they're not going to give us the words of and is this time, we just have to think about, well, which is bigger, the people in seventh grade that are right handed or all the people in seventh grade. Okay. All right. So for number five, a book collector has 425 books, 56% of which were published prior to 1900. How many books were published prior to 1900? Okay, so is that 425 represent all the books or does it represent the books that were published prior to 1990? Well, it can't be the ones published prior to 1990 because that's what they're asking us to find. So they want us to find the part. So only part of the books were published prior to 1900, okay? So, sorry if I said 1990. So I have 425 is the whole thing and 56 is my percent. Okay, let's set it up. So X over uh, 425 um, is equal to 56 over 100. Okay, so let's do cross products. 100 X equals 425 times 56 is 23,800. Divide both sides by 100. And X is 238. Oop, oh my gosh, I didn't even write the number at all that I was thinking, so weird. Okay, now, does it make sense that our number is smaller than 425? Yes, because you can't have more books published prior to 1900 than you have books. Okay, now, notice the directions say, write your final answer as a sentence. So I can't just write 238 because I want to know that you know what you figured out. So I would say 238 books uh, were from, were published before 1900. I know it takes like an extra 30 seconds to write the sentence, but sometimes they'll give you on multiple choice tests uh, different answers and you want to make sure you have the right one. Okay. So number six, Elena uses 8% of her weekly paychecks. I'm going to put eight for the percent to pay for gas. If she spent 3412 on gas this week, how much was her paycheck? So the part that was on gas is a part. The paycheck is the whole. So that's what we don't know. So X goes for whole 3412 goes for the part because paying for gas was part of her paycheck. Okay, cool. So $34.12 over X equals eight over a hundred. Okay, I don't know how to, I don't know off the top of my head what eight times something is to get 3412. So I'm gonna do cross products. So eight X equals 3,412. When you multiply by hundred, you move the decimal two places to the right, divide both sides by eight and X equals $426.50. Woo. Okay, so her paycheck was $426.50. And the dollar sign goes in the front in US currency. Okay, cool. So the only thing different really is we're trying to figure out based on the problem, what the, the part in the whole are, then we're writing a sentence. Okay, on the high school girls soccer team, 62.5% of the players, 62.5, are juniors and seniors. If there are seven juniors and eight seniors on the team, find the total number of players. So the total represents the whole. We don't know how big the team is, but we know that the part that we're talking about is 15. Where did I get 15? Well, they tell us that the players are juniors and seniors, and then they tell us seven and then eight, so I had to add them together. Okay, so 15 over X equals 62.5 over 100. Okay, so I get 62.5 X equals 1500, divide both sides by 62.5, and I get X is 24. So the question said, find the total number of players there are 24 players. Okay, 
So what is 50% of the team? 12, right? Because half of 24 is 12. And 62.5 is a little bit more than 50%. And 15 is a little bit more than 12. All right. Woohoo. Okay. So you got it. We got three more on your owns. And then we're going to come back. Actually, I'm going to mark this really quick. Let's come back and do this together so they don't make these on your owns. Okay. Let's come back and do those together. Um, but please do four, five, and six. Okay. Cool. I'll see you in a minute. All right. So here's what I got. So for number four, on your own number four, I got 42.9% of the dogs are purebred. And you could have said 43. That's fine. It was technically 42.85. So I just rounded to the nearest 10th. So if you're not sure, always round to the nearest 10th. Unless it's money, round to the nearest 100th. Um, for number five, you had to know how many days were in October. But hopefully you knew that because Halloween is October 31st. So there's 31 days. And so approximately 23 days are sunny. And I used approximate because we rounded. And then number six was kind of tricky because it said how many are not purple. Well, you found out that nine are purple, which means that 60 minus nine is 51. So 51 are not purple. Okay, cool. So please get help if those didn't make sense. All right. So the last ones, what are some ways you can identify whether something represents the whole? So looking for words like of or total um, are really helpful. Okay, they tell you that it's the entire thing. What are some ways you can identify the part? You look for the words is, and maybe you look for like partial or the word like some, like S-O-M-E. Okay, so just little clues for that. Okay, so again, I know there are other ways to solve um, percent problems, and I want you to be able to show this on the test. So please solve either the green or the blue homework using the percent proportion. And then after the test, you can show me everything you know. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.